and we need a couple different things for this test. We need a scope, an accurate signal generator, and of course we need the unknown frequency source. We also should let the equipment warm up a few minutes. Uh, again, I just mentioned that we have to put the, in order to get the listed you figure, we have to put the scope into the XY mode. And like I probably already mentioned a few times in my past videos, in some scopes it used to be have to be the scope used to be have to set to external. And the again the signal generator has got to be pretty accurate or else your measurements are going to be off. So and I think also as I mentioned again in the last video, a signal applied to the vertical input is going to make the electron beam move up and down. And if we put the scope into the XY mode, we can do the same thing to the horizontal input. And what's going to happen then is the beam is going to be pulled left, right, up, and down. And I like to set mine up to where like I get a 3 inch display. It's not necessary, it's just the way I like to do things. And Again, this can be done by adjusting the amplitude of the signal source and the vertical controls. What we don't want is, as I mentioned before too, is a stationary dot like this. I don't like to repeat myself with every, in every video, say the same thing over and over. That's that dot I was just talking about. But I have had people complain before that, okay, you forgot something, how, how did you do this? So and I had made various different videos and people just never bothered to watch them. Um, so basically I've got the equipment now everything's warmed up for a couple minutes and what we're looking for is trying to get a halfway stable display although that's not always uh, possible. Of course I'm going to start out with the very the most basic thing this is like the for me at least the second easiest type of display to show and that's when our unknown frequency matches the unknown frequency we get a circle so let me just go ahead and um, show that real quick and here's that circle I was talking about um, of course the, the closer we get the two frequencies match the more the signal generator the pattern basically is gonna slow down I think I got a bad connection here somewhere too. It's speeding up now, so I'm going the other into the other direction here. And you can see it really slowing down now. But we want to get into more complicated signals, which is basically the subject of this video. So um what we're gonna do is compare the ratio of the loops which I'm going to show or the circles in order to get the ratio of the frequencies. Say if we had a 2 to 1 loop ratio then we would also have a 2 to 1 frequency ratio. So let me go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and um, set up my known frequency which is the signal generator which I'm feeding the signal into the X input. I'm going to make that 2000 Hertz now and then you'll see what happens. Now now this is the way I learned to do this. Um, again, my known frequency is going into the X input or the horizontal and my unknown is going to the Y input or the vertical. And what, what I simply do I've got a bad connection here somewhere. Um, I'm going to try to slow this down more because it is moving kind of fast. And I increase or decrease the speed, of course, by adjusting the frequency of my known, basically my reference uh, signal generator. So let me go ahead and try that. Um, no, that was completely wrong. So takes a second to get everything to adjust everything and I try to get this now if you look here there's actually two loops on here uh, what I do is I count the number of loops in one direction and the number of loops in the other direction you could also call these points or touches 
and a lot of times for me I find it easier if I just take the whole whole thing here and of course you can with your position controls you can control the position of everything see like that sometimes it just makes it easier easier to read and if you notice here let me adjust the camera a little bit it's touching the top once basically and the sides twice there's two touches here I don't I think that can be seen one two and once on the top let me slow down even more so that I can show that even better let me this just takes a second here now I think it can be shown even better there we go once on the top and one two on the side so that's a basically a two to a two to one ratio and that would mean that now my known signal generator that's at 2000 Hertz and the unknown frequency is I can tell you now it's a thousand Hertz and I'll show you how to um, get that in a second so here's my equation it's the top tips or touches whatever you want to call it divided by the left tips or touches times the known frequency and if we look here it's touching once at the top twice on the side there's two loops here so we take the one divided by two and our known frequency this frequency from the signal generator is 2000 Hertz so if we do the math then we get 2000 over 2 we get 1000 Hertz that's our unknown frequency of course you could also of course change your inputs here around say you fed your known frequency into the Y input and your unknown into the X I'll show you what that does just got a swap here now you notice suddenly you get the two two tips here the two touches on the top and only one on on the left it's the other way around so your math then would have to be different too so I think what you would have to do therefore you would have to go ahead and take your left tips or touches and and divide them by your uh, top tips or touches in order to get that now I'm gonna go ahead and speed things up here again my known frequency is 2000 Hertz and I'm gonna take it up to 3000 and then we should see the one on the top and three tips or touches on the side so let me go ahead and slowly bring this up now this here is completely normal We're, it's only going to stabilize once we reach the next multiple of the unknown frequency which is going to be of course we already know the unknown frequency is a thousand Hertz in this case since I said so once we reach around 3000 Hertz then this will start slowing down and then 4000 5000 only the multiples so let me go ahead and so that is 3000 Hertz well not overshot that now here that can be seen right there Let's see if I can't slow that down some here you can clearly see it now one two three one on top so the same thing I would go ahead and take my top touches one then I would divide that by three and then I would times that by my frequency my known frequency which is 3000 Hertz that's what's coming out of my signal generator and of course then I do the math there so I'm going to try something more complicated now I'm going to go ahead and try um, my known signal is going to be 4000 and my unknown is going to be 3000 Hertz so it's, that's going to give me a 4 to 3 pattern of course I already know what my unknown since I don't have, since I don't have an unknown frequency here so let me go ahead and adjust that so now here is a 4 to 3 ratio that is to say my known frequency my standard my signal generator um, 
that's putting out 4,000 Hertz and the supposedly unknown frequency is 3,000 Hertz and we look we can do the counting and we'll see here there's three tips here it's hard it's hard for me to show this but I can actually see them one two three and this way there should be four one two three four of course this thing is always moving I don't know if I can get it to slow down and yeah I think it's slowing down there see one two three and then here one two three four so that's again we do the same thing it touches the top at basically three different places and it touches the left at four different places so basically we take the three and divide it by four and then we times that by our um, known frequency that is the frequency coming out of the signal generator and that will go ahead and give us the number now here's an even more complicated display this is five to three so notice three on top one two three and one two three four five on the um, five on the left so it gets more I think once it reaches a certain point it's really like hard to hard to see anything again um, now the, the pattern itself is not going to be it's going to be like this until you reach a multiple of the unknown frequency so basically right now um, my known frequency is 5000 my unknown is 3000 so what happens when our known frequency is less than the unknown frequency so far it's always been more than I'll show that here okay now my known frequency is half of the unknown frequency in fact my known frequency now is 500 Hertz and I can tell you what my unknown frequency is since I'm working actually using two signal generators it's actually a thousand Hertz so this is just the opposite then now we've got two touches on the top and one on the left so we would take the two two touches and divided it by the one on the left that gives us two times our known frequency which is 500 Hertz that would give us a thousand Hertz that would be the unknown frequency so now here is the math for this one remember the top tips or touches divided by the left tip or touches and we've got two on the top one on the side so that's going to give me two divided by one and this is our generator frequency 500 Hertz so the unknown frequency then is a thousand Hertz even though I do know what the unknown frequency is of course since I'm using another audio generator this was just in case you had to figure out an unknown frequency and you didn't have a frequency counter for example So I don't have anything else to add to this. Um, my next video is going to be about the checking out a amplifier using the XY mode and then I probably won't do any more videos using the XY mode I think. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this was somehow a little bit um, enlightening and not too obscure. Most of my topics are always really obscure. Uh, again you just have to experiment around that's how you learn and that's what you should do thanks for watching